also thank you uh, you know for that wonderful introduction so i don't have to spend a lot of time introducing myself um but yeah let me quickly share my screen and uh, get this uh, train started all right uh, so i hope everyone's having a fantastic day so far uh, don't worry uh, you have not stumbled upon uh, you know a wrong stream or you know into a wrong universe i'm still very much going to be talking about uh, cloud native observability logging metrics uh, although there's like a picture of logs here um, because i really have no idea about uh, you know logs in the real world like um, you know wooden logs and um, anomaly detection of something that i have zero um <clears throat> you know knowledge about is a little difficult um as uh, you know i was introduced earlier on um i uh, you know i'm a senior technical evangelist at susa but uh, before my pivot into the cloud native ecosystem um i was a systems administrator and dear sweet lord how much i hated um, outages and uh, um you know being on call in general um uh, i would be suspicious if anyone actually really liked uh, being on call or you know liked outages happening uh, because it's literally like uh, having an axe around your neck if you're uh, you know um, on the support side or on the development side when this happens uh jokes apart uh, though my experience in the cloud native ecosystem also pretty much resembles um or rather you know the experience that i had previous to cloud native pretty much set the tone how i ventured into cloud native as well i stumbled on to the chaos engineering and observability space way before i actually uh, you know started dabbling with kubernetes as a project um and speaking of kubernetes i am one of the docs maintainers on there um so that's a bit about me over and above what um, you know was introduced earlier on um but coming to the agenda for today i know i kind of said that we're not going to be talking about wooden logs so um that's like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to setting the context but we have to go a little bit deeper to understand what is it exactly that we are going to talk about and why is opni relevant in that context um we also need to know what is the problem that it actually solves because you have nearly 170 plus projects on the uh, cloud native landscape that are uh, open source and uh, why do you need another one so that's that's uh, the second section then uh, we will walk through the steps of installing opni on rancher desktop now this method has its own pitfalls uh, which we shall cover in that section as well but um, uh, if you are you know experimenting with a poc or something um, i would recommend that you install it directly on rancher instead of rancher desktop then we'll go through you know what an opni dashboard and the admin ui looks like and we'll see a couple of uh, cases um, where actually things could have been um, you know recognized and flagged ahead of time and where these anomalies crop up and how they are displayed on the um, you know admin ui and last we will you know delve into the project roadmap um i forgot to add the sections of resources and thank you but i guess that's pretty self explanatory <laughs> so um without further ado let's dive right in now um i've been talking for i think around 5 ish minutes um maybe less but i still think it's a very safe space uh, to say that you know outages really aren't that great of an experience um and they truly suck if they happen when you're on call when you're working uh like if outages were an experience visor or uh, you know any of the other websites i would 100% not recommend it but unfortunately as an industry um you know it's a part and parcel because like their creators software is also fallible um going back to my days as a sys admin i can say that uh, you could pretty much uh, decipher what is going on uh, what is going wrong with a software or what is going on in a software by looking at the logs um 
because they are the way your software pretty much communicates with you. Uh, we obviously have metrics and traces. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but reading logs is like uh, one of the best um, skills that you can have <coughs> when it comes to your software industry. Uh, because they have like such rich information contained inside of them um, that, you know, you can possibly uh, catch problems before they actually occur because that warning message always is there. Uh, but unfortunately, logs aren't the easiest when it comes to readability and accessibility. And uh, it's also the reason why logs aren't preferred when you talk about using them for debugging issues you you ask anybody people will prefer a dashboard to a log any day any time uh, but what if we could make that experience simpler uh, what if we could actually um, you know have logs um, you know sifted through for us because grepping is a great idea but if you have like tens and thousands of logs grepping is a very tedious task take it from me I've done that um but if what if we could actually simplify this whole experience and enable users to read logs and capture uh, issues before they actually become issues so that is what opni uh, come uh, you know does or at least aims to do uh, because um opni uh, hasn't yet reached ga we still uh, building out our capabilities and, um, you know, it's a tool uh, in the cloud native landscape for multi-cluster, multi-tenant observability. Uh, it's built atop Kubernetes. Um, so when we talk about observability in the cloud native space, like I said before, there are a ton of tools. Uh, and uh, I'm not even going to throw up the CNCF landscape because I do that in every presentation and I cannot see the landscape on the screen myself. So I think it's pretty useless right now to put it here. But you get the gist, the landscape is literally growing at a fast pace and you don't need just another tool to come into the landscape and, uh, you know, provide you with the same capabilities. So what are OPNI's capabilities that, um, you know, that help in, um, you know, making it, uh, in st making it stand out? Uh, so... Um, whatever tooling you see on the landscape, they sort of fall into a couple of subsections. One will be to either visualize, another will be to, you know, um, uh, store your metrics or store your data. Another might be to aggregate your data um, and some might, you know, collect your data. But there's not like a whole package uh, so far available um, that, you know, combines all these things. And add to this the fact that logging is totally uh, not something that you account for when you are talking about all this. Uh, logging is still very much the uh, neglected child um, in, you know, the observability domain. And um, it's pretty much not looked at because of the issues I mentioned before. Opni aims to fill this gap um, by being like, you know, the complete package, if I may say so. And it does that by creating and managing your backends, your agents, um, and, you know, uh, your SLOs. And it also manages all the data associated with your logging, your metrics, your tracing. And uh, what is like the cherry on top is the fact that, you know, it comes built in with AI ops. Now I know AI and ML is like a very intimidating topic to a lot of us here. Um, I am personally very intimidated when somebody comes and tells me uh, stuff like, uh, you know, uh, I learned, how, uh, I mean, I am, you know, learning machine learning because I think that person is a genius. If, you know, you talk something very, um, uh, you talk even like, the very basics of AIML, I think you'll be a genius is uh, is the, you know, inference. Uh, but um, with OPNI, this comes built in with AI ops. And as we shall see in the next couple of slides, you don't actually have to have knowledge of AI or ML to work with this. Um, and this is uh, pre-trained uh, for, you know, the Kubernetes control plane, um, the ranch, uh, rancher clusters and Longhorn. 
so we plan to eventually add metric anomaly and root cause detection as well to this whole thing because log log anomaly detection we realize is just like one part of the puzzle so um there are a lot of things going on here um and that is why it's important to understand how it is different um so first uh, first come first thing is that you know it's open source um a lot of tools in the ai ops space if you go to look at it are proprietary um i think we are one of the very first projects who are open source um like i said before no knowledge of ai or ml is required by the person operating it um the models sort of train themselves and you're happy they're happy everyone's happy um and uh, we've designed it in such a way that it does not require a huge volume of logs to get started and um, it it's it's coming with uh, pre trained models for all these uh, specific uh, you know distributions and the aim is to incorporate all sorts of ensemble uh, variations of these distributions and other distributions so that you know we can provide a proper subset uh, to literally every customer or literally every user of the project uh now that all sounds great um i know that you know i just sounded really markety <laughs> um and people will be curious to know how this is all translate into uh, you know technical stuff um as a for mentioned it's built on top of kubernetes um and the two main components uh, like with pretty much everything that's managed kubernetes is your upstream and your downstream cluster now your upstream cluster will um uh you know have a gateway component and your downstream cluster will have an opni agent component um so uh, the gateway is one of the main components for opni in the upstream cluster and in the installation as uh, a whole because it's 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 very powerful owing to the number of uh, servers that it comprises of so uh, when you're talking about uh, accessing uh, opni via the cli or via the des uh, you know dashboard um you are you know going uh, via uh, the management server endpoint when you're talking about um, you know the uh, gateway connecting to the agents uh, you're talking about um uh, say the agent establishing a stream bidirectional stream um at the grpc server endpoint so um the, there are many api servers i think there are four there are not i think but there are four um uh, there are four api servers which are responsible for a lot of the workload uh, for which you know uh, of opni and uh, what essentially um you know the uh, from a user workflow perspective uh, opni does is you have a cli or um, a dashboard via which you can actually access opni and uh, inject faults and uh, figure out um where um you know where that anomaly is coming up the dashboard is a great way to visualize as we as we shall see in the demo now uh this is an oversimplification because obviously um api servers just doesn't cut it right uh, like if everything were just api servers it would be really cool but uh, somebody has to do all the collecting and all the you know actual uh, overhead work of uh, you know collecting all the stuff storing it and all of that so that's where uh, you know i'm going to zoom in into this architecture um when you talk about your upstream opni cluster right um you have um uh you have it on a kubernetes cluster here it's depicted as kubernetes but like i said before um it's uh, run it's you know it works best with rancher uh when you install opni um for the very first time it will install the uh, admin ui and the opni gateway uh while the admin ui is used to create and manage backends slos the gateway is used to establish that uh, communication with the downstream agents at uh, the backend side of things you have the logging and monitoring backend uh the monitoring backend is um, 
powered by Cortex and Grafana deployments, while um, Opni leverages uh, open search for its uh, uh, logging, um, you know, backend, wherein it becomes easier to uh, search, visualize, and analyze logs uh, from the Kubernetes control plane um, and other, uh, you know, uh, and from Rancher and other places. Although not shown here, uh, there's also an alerting backend which uh, comprises of the alert manager deployed as a fully managed uh, st stateful set. Uh, the management is done by Hopney. Uh, but what about the agent? Um, currently, you will need to install the Hopney agent separately on the downstream cluster, either via you know your Rancher UI or via Helm. The recommendation is to actually perform it via Rancher UI, which is um, uh, which is why I said that you know the uh, demo with Rancher desktop will be a walkthrough. Um, and uh, once done, once you've installed uh, the Opni agent on the downstream cluster, um, you also need to ensure that the corresponding backends are enabled so that you know this entire setup works. Right. Um, but what about AI ops? I've not come to the uh, star of the show yet. Uh, we've been talking about the architecture and um, uh, I started off this whole conversation with, you know, oh my God, um, logs are so difficult to read. Uh, we need more things that help us with reading logs. Um, uh, as you shall see in the second demo, there are broadly two ways um, of not two ways are two ways of how we um, leverage uh, AI ML for log anomaly detection. One is obviously using pre-trained models and uh, uh, you have um, those pre-trained models available for certain distributions. Um, and if you're looking to start uh, just like me at level minus 50, this is a great place to start. But if you have a GPU or two and you want to sort of, you know, dive in right at the deep end, you can do that too. Um, you are able to learn and self-train uh, models based on your uh, workload logs if, you know, you have a GPU to spare. Uh, but coming to the, um, you know, AI ops part of it again, um, the machine learning uh, method used is uh, drain which is one of the very popular uh, log parsing methods uh, available in the machine learning ecosystem um, and it learns uh, from incoming log um, uh, messages which also enables it to detect changes in environment uh, very quickly um, and uh, we've adapted drain uh, to actually um, you know, be an anomaly detector for logs. Um, and it's also what controls the trigger for, you know, our deep learning model. Now, the deep learning model, uh, deep learning method that we use is new log. It's based off a popular um, paper. Uh, and these resources are linked at the end, so don't worry about it. Um, it this one requires GPU. So deep learning requires GPU and is a sequence to sequence model um, that uh, basically uh, learns semantic co uh, contextual information from your log messages. Um, it's extremely accurate and um, it typically needs a large amount of data to start with uh, or at least a steady state, right? Uh, but with the Opni project, we wanted to make it a little more simpler for people to get started with. And that's why we have designed Drain to kick off um, deep learning only once the steady state is achieved. So Drain kind of is like your manager in this scenario. Now, uh, this is um, a use case in the wild. Um, and uh, from one of the uh, real K3S outages that have actually happened. Um, we had our support actually work on this outage and uh, I can definitely say the humans took a lot more time than the, uh, uh, you know, Opni project did to figure out where the issue was and what the root cause is. So um, out of the uh, 45 minutes that was spent by Opni to figure out the blocked text, 
um i think 30 minutes were spent in training the model itself all right so if uh, also in addition i'm not sure if you can see the um, you know spike here which shows that you know there was an issue at around 10:29 am the graph is not that clear i realize but uh, at around 10:29 am the issue actually uh, cropped up on the anomaly insights um and in the logs and the reported issue was at 10:31 so the logs actually forewarned the fact that you know there was going to be an issue and if this was deployed and had it known there uh, had it been known that this was going to happen via this insight uh, box and had you said the appropriate notifications to be sent out the issue could have been um, i wouldn't say avoided uh, because that would be an extreme ideal case but at least the turnaround time would have been better uh, honestly speaking with better sophistication uh, the numbers would have definitely seen a drastic decrease and obviously lesser manual overheads would have been incurred during the entire process now uh, now we shall look at um, you know installing uh run apni on rancher desktop the pitfalls of this is that grafana doesn't work as well over here but you can share the uh, but steps to just you know get a feel of how it works out in this case so first up we need cert manager um to be you know installed on your local machine or wherever um before which uh, the very first step would be to install rancher desktop i should not have assumed that but uh, um that's that's my folly uh, you need to first have rancher desktop installed once that's done you install your cert manager then you customize your installation um, there is a sample uh, values.yaml file that's available um in our docs uh, which will be which is at www.opni.io uh, that sample dot uh, sample values dot yaml can be customized by adding the host name selecting the authentication provider and um, uh, then you know um, you know clicking save and then um, you add the opni helm repository um this is all fairly simple once uh, that's done you install the opni crd chart um and then you install the opni um, you know uh, with the values.yaml you previously had actually customized so this sort of uh, installs opni on rancher desktop like i said it will it's just an installation to start off with i wouldn't recommend this even as like a poc to demonstrate its value prop because it works best with just rancher not rancher desktop so that's one thing and uh, yes the demo so i'm just going to stop sharing here um and yeah i'll just quickly show you the um, insights and this thing i realize i'm running out of time so yeah just a second Huh. So um, this is what your Opni dashboard sort of looks like, um, and we are. Uh, you can just directly go to visualize your. so if you can see these are the various anomalies uh, reported and uh, uh you can the uh, you can uh, uh, this is anomalies by kubernetes components uh, you can also visualize uh, by uh, you know control plane logs uh, and your rancher logs breakdown you can i'll just show it to you here but uh, this is the thing uh, now uh, when i say right that uh, yeah let me just go here right so if you look at this um it will it will show you all these things um on the dashboard side of things and um you also have uh, the discover side uh, discover feature 
wherein uh, you can see uh, uh, these log entries. Typically, you would not really look at these log entries and figure out what could go wrong, right? So these log entries are extremely valuable in case an actual outage occurs and uh, it would be helpful if that was not the case. Um, you know, uh, if you know you could read logs better and if you could actually see what they had written in their law, uh, if what is being written in them. So um, this actually, um, you can, you know, see this graphically visualized here and you can see a lot uh, you can see a lot and um, if you require uh, like uh, help with setting anything up please do reach out i think i have very less time to show you the rest of the stuff here but um, coming back uh, to the project roadmap um, i will just um, you know sort of again um, just a second Right, so uh, right. So the project roadmap um, uh, would be to uh, have managed open uh, uh, telemetry collector for logs, metrics, and traces. Some of the work is already done, uh, but most of it will be completed by the time KubeCon is in full full swing, I guess. Um, we also plan to implement um, open source, uh, open search as a vector store for AI ML applications and um, a chatbot powered by large language models. All of these um, items that I've just discussed are available um, and are visible to everyone uh, by, you know, navigating to this, uh, uh, you know, project board. So please feel free to check it out. And these are the resources that I mentioned, uh, those papers and everything else. I've also included a link to the docs and to the Slack channel. So um, please feel free uh, if you have any issues setting up or anything else, any questions to join our Rancho Slack and uh, reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, and thank you so much uh, to the entire KCD organizing team for inviting me on here. Thank you.